and whether there is enough freedom around the way the flag can be used in public before the rights holders are able to demand a fee. Now, the Senate will investigate copyright and licensing arrangements for the flag, and I spoke to the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, Linda Burney, a little earlier. Linda Burney, welcome. Thank you, Patricia. What are you hoping this inquiry will achieve? The inquiry has passed unanimously, unanimously in the Senate uh, just a few moments ago. What we wanted to achieve is to look at ways to make sure we protect the copyright of the author of the flag, that's Harold Thomas, but to also explore the issues, particularly around the capacity for the flag uh, and the image of the flag to be used freely and respectfully for all Australians, and in particular Aboriginal organisations and Aboriginal people. The Minister, Ken Wyatt, says he's working to resolve this issue. Why do you feel a Senate inquiry is needed, given the government's already clearly doing some work here? Uh, the government is doing some work. Um, uh, I don't know how long that's going to take, and I do wish uh, the minister well in his negotiations. Uh, that would be a great outcome if uh, something could be landed in terms of uh, particularly the licensing of the flag. Uh, but we believe that a Senate inquiry is necessary uh, to hear from a variety of people uh, out there in the community the people that are running campaigns about the flag, academics, uh, people from organisations that have received cease and desist letters in relation to re reproducing the flag. There's also a very big number of large um, sports sports codes that um, have made decisions not to use the image of the flag uh, because of the licensing issues. So there is a very broad range of people uh, who have an interest in the flag, not just Aboriginal people, um, and that's what the inquiry is going to explore. How do you balance the rights of the man who owns the copyright against the view that the flag belongs to all Aboriginal people? Because this is essentially at the heart of the problem, isn't it? Uh, the problem is very much around um, the protection of Harold Thomas and his copyright. Now, uh, his actions in relation to licensing to the flag to a company called Wham, uh, which in my view um, has a lot to explain, uh, is is perfectly legal under the, the, the law in Australia. But is it morally right is the question. Um, if Aboriginal organisations, if the AFL, for example, in the Dreamtime round, can't use images of the flag, I think that raises a number of questions. Um, but you're right, the balance is important. It's important that the flag be available, uh, which is, you know, free the flag so that people can use it, um, including school children. I mean, can you imagine the, uh, the 2000 Olympics when Cathy won the 400 without the image of her with the Aboriginal and the Australian flag around, uh, around her shoulders? Uh, in preschools, when children are learning colours, uh, they might look at the Aboriginal flag to understand what those colours represent. There are so many uses and important aspects to the flag, apart from the value that it has for, for First Nations people, Patricia. Uh, you know, the fact that it is the one symbol that in the diversity of our cultures unites all First Peoples together. It's important. Do you support the compulsory acquisition of the flag by the federal government? There is going to be that question raised in the inquiry. Um, compulsory acquisition is one of them. But under the Australian Constitution, just terms compensation is a very important part of the Constitution. Um, I support the uh, protection of Harold Thomas's copyright, but I also very much support the notion that the flag should not be held hostage by private uh, companies that have, uh, have profit at their heart. Do you welcome the federal government's move to stamp out the sale of fake Indigenous art? 
I think the uh, work that is going to be undertaken by Minister Wyatt and by Minister Fletcher in relation to fake Indigenous art is a very welcome move. It's something that Labor endorses. Uh, we've held a number of inquiries over the years into uh, the misappropriation of Indigenous art. In fact, one of the problems they have with the company that now has the licence for the flag is that they were fined $2.3 million by the ACCC last year, Burabi Arts or Burapa Arts or some, something along those lines, uh, because uh, 18,000 items were sold uh, purporting to be Aboriginal art actually made in Indonesia. And of course at the heart of this, Patricia, is to make sure that the remuneration of Aboriginal artists, uh, genuine artists, is made. And it's a very important uh, undertaking by Minister Fletcher and by Minister Wyatt. Linda Burney, just finally, the Victorian Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation has written to the Prime Minister asking for more COVID-19 funding. Should urban Indigenous communities in Victoria be given a higher priority than they are? I think what the Victorian Aboriginal um, uh, Controlled Health Organisation done is very important. Um, I welcome very much the support that's been given through the Andrews government in protection um, of urban communities and regional communities throughout Victoria uh, from COVID-19. I mean, I don't need to express uh, to you, because I know you've explored it, Patricia, just how devastating it uh, would be for COVID to get uh, a foothold in our communities, be they remote or regional or urban. It's a very important undertaking. More than 50,000 people have accessed specialised pandemic training for Indigenous health workers. How successful has the response to the pandemic been in Indigenous communities and what are you worried about moving to the future? I know you've just said that you think that there has mm. been some success, but do you feel like we're at a tipping point or, or there could be further risks? I think the the risk is always there, and um, I think it has been a remarkably successful part of uh, Australia's response to the pandemic, that it has not got its foothold in particularly remote Aboriginal communities, uh, which are incredibly vulnerable, incredibly localised. Um, and right across this country, we know that most Aboriginal people um, have comorbidities when it comes to health issues. So the worry is constantly there, but I do celebrate very much that there has not been um, a serious outbreak of COVID in any Aboriginal communities uh, thus far. But the risk is always there. There. And the um, uh, we we cannot uh, sit back and rest and say the job is done. It is not done um, for the broader community and in particular for vulnerable communities like First Nation communities. Linda Burney, lovely to speak to you. Thank you, Patricia. There are twelve.